All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let's talk for the next few moments about a rock-solid faith. Ah, yes, a foundation upon which you may build with confidence. And let's go to a passage that some have referred to as Inspiration's Hall of Fame, Hebrews chapter 11. Beginning at verse 1, we learn that faith is assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. For therein the elders had witness born unto them. By faith, we understand that the worlds have been framed by the Word of God, so that what is seen hath not been made out of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he had testimony born unto him that he was righteous, God bearing witness with respect to his gifts, and through it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and he was not found, for God translated him. For before his translation, he had witness born to him that he had been pleasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to be well pleasing to him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God concerning things not seen as yet, moved with godly fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Uh, through which he overthrew the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. That's through verse 7, beginning at verse 1, Hebrews chapter 11. Let's notice some things that are said here, and hopefully to be beneficial to those of us who will give further time in the study of these matters. Faith is assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. You know, the footnotes say for assurance, it says, gives substance to. What? Faith gives substance to the things uh, hoped for. And friends, you can rely upon that. It is amazing. Now, we know that faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10 at verse 17. So when we give ourselves to the reading and, yea, the study of God's Word, we know that it could not have been the product of the human mind. No, no, it's simply out of the question. You know, it's amazing to me the number of intelligent people who say, oh, well, you know, the Bible is filled with old wives' tales and uh, stories of the lore that's past. And so, uh, no, no, you, you've never read it, have you? Never read it. Oh, you've probably read a little here and a little there, and uh, you've confused uh, figurative language with literal statements, and consequently, uh, your mind is confused. You've not uh, read uh, God's Word. It is remarkable when with an open mind you give attention to your reading of God's Word. Oh, there's no question that it originated with an omniscient mind, all-knowing. You see, there are hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament fulfilled exactly and minutely, no question. More than 300 prophecies relative to the Messiah, which Jesus Christ fulfilled in great detail. Oh, and when the Bible makes a scientific uh, statement, uh, and men discover hundreds of years later uh, that that uh, is the case, <laughs> described it exactly. Oh, no question. You remember uh, not too long ago, uh, men thought that the earth was flat. Uh, mariners who were afraid to go too far out on the sea uh, to hold a straight course because uh, you fall over the edge. Ah, they thought the earth was flat. Well, Toscanelli, an Italian, and uh, some of the early Greeks suggested the rotundity of the earth. Uh, they, they began to think in terms of the fact that the earth is uh, probably round. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the Bible writers knew exactly the shape of the earth. 
In Isaiah 40, verse 22, it is he, that's God, that sitteth above the circle of the earth. Circle of the earth? Oh, well, somebody says that's just a, that's just a, a chance uh, statement. Well, in Proverbs 8, verse 27, he set a circle upon the face of the deep. I can personally testify to that fact. The first thing that comes in sight of an approaching ship is the top of the mast. If it comes in your direction, comes nearer, uh, you finally see the flying bridge. And if it gets close enough, uh, you can see the hull uh, of the ship uh, set a circle on the face of the deep. Oh, and it's interesting that Jesus taught that he would come uh, in the morning, uh, in the evening, uh, at noontime, at midnight. Oh, well, somebody says that's ridiculous. He couldn't come at all of those times. If he comes, he will. You see, all of those times exist on the earth right now uh, somewhere. I remember we did a two-week campaign in Bangkok, Thailand, which if you'll take your globe, you'll find it'll be just exactly on the other side of the earth. And uh, when I came home, uh, came in from the office uh, for lunch, and I almost fell over in my plate. I became so sleepy, so weak. Someone said, well, why would you do that? Because where I'd been for the last two weeks, that was midnight. Oh, it was noonday in Montgomery, Alabama. Right. But it was midnight in Bangkok, Thailand. Yes, sir. Well, why would that be so? Well, the earth's round. What? The earth is round. The writers of the Bible didn't know any more about the shape of the earth than the mariners who were afraid to hold a straight course on the bosom of the deep. Oh, but when they wrote about it, they wrote by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so they just wrote the truth about it. You see, the God that made the earth uh, knew the shape of the earth. And so when he had these men write about it, he just had them write about it uh, like it is. Uh, there's no question about it. We've talked about, you know, the uh, concept of the suspension of the earth. How is it supported? How is it kept? A, oh, and we noted Job 26, verse 7. He hangeth the earth upon nothing. He, right? he hangeth the earth upon nothing. There is nothing visible that holds it in place. As one fellow said, he just slung it out there and told it to stay. And that's it. That's the way that thing it works. It is to me amazing. And uh, men keep discovering this, that, and the other, and we're grateful for that. Uh, physical science must have a physical basis, and we understand that. Uh, they can't incorporate spiritual matters into physical science. No, no. They want something they can put their finger on that's concrete that they can prove, and we understand and appreciate that. Oh, but you would think that after a while it will become evident to them that we live in an intelligently established universe. And they are denying intelligent creation. Can you imagine a man made in the image and the likeness of God who stands outside the monkey cage while the monkeys are on the inside reaching such a conclusion? Why is he on the outside and the monkeys on the inside? Friends, he's an intelligent being. He's capable of compassion, of understanding, of forgiveness, of kindness, of goodness, Oh, that's the way God is. Yeah, you and I are made in the image and the likeness of God. Intelligent creation? Well, it's been doing the same thing uh, all of my life, and I suspect uh, considerably before I was born. It is uh, amazing. God is in charge. God created this material universe. You were born, you'll live a while, and you'll die. Hebrews 9, verse 27. Yes, but after your death, uh, the judgment. Faith is the assurance. Uh, yes, sir, there is no question about the fact that I am a spirit being. Otherwise, the whole thing would be folly. You really stop to think about it. Somebody said, boy, he accomplished great things. Oh, all oh, this is going to be burned up. Oh, we appreciate it, sure. And we're thankful that great things were accomplished. And we thank God for great men that do things for people, that make a better world in which to live. And that's great. How long will the memory of those people last? Till man, of course, forgets about it, e or until man is uh, gone. Uh, there's no more uh, material existence uh, at all. Yes, but you and I will live forever. There are but two places for the disembodied spirits of men, friends, heaven and hell. 
I need to make adequate preparation to meet God acceptably in the day of judgment. How can I do that? Faith. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. You see, when I see the concrete evidence of the source of the conduct of God and the content of the Bible, oh, well, I'm sure uh, there's no, it gives substance to faith. There's no question about the fact that we're made in the image and the likeness of God. And we are going to die, and I don't have to use the Bible to prove that, even though Hebrews 9.27 says that we are. No, no. A stroll through the cemetery is adequate. Where are you going? Faith is assurance of things hoped for. It is a conviction of things not seen. Uh, therein, uh, in faith, the elders had testimony, witness, born unto them. Oh, and that's what the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews is all about. God bore witness to their fidelity, their acceptability, the fact that they were pleasing to Him. How was that done? On the basis of their faith. And you know it's interesting, but we'll talk about it later, the way faith is made manifest, the evidence of saving faith in the life of a sinful human being. Oh, but therein the elders had witness born unto them. And then he said, by faith we understand that the worlds have been framed by the Word of God, so that what is seen hath not been made out of things which appear. Ooh, that's, that's plain terminology, isn't it? And uh, many people today, highly intelligent people, uh, deny this. Oh, they have this explanation, that idea, this concept, how it began, it just chanced, it happened, it exploded, it took. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's it, ten words. That's uh, all you need. In Genesis chapter 1, uh, beginning at verse 1. That's the way the world, this material universe, came into being. As uh, the wise man said in Psalms 33, uh, verse 9, uh, at least David uh, made the statement, he spake and it stood fast. He commanded and it was done. Uh, that's the way the earth was created. Well, somebody says, how do I know that? By faith. Yeah, but someone says, now, preacher, faith is not tangible. It's not something you can take hold of. It's not a material, uh, no, no, no. Faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Well, how do you know that the Word of God is true? I read it. <laughs> I said it. I observed what it said. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. It's Psalm 14, verse 1. Psalm 53 at verse 1. Now, that's not using the term fool in uh, a derisive way, uh, not trying to make someone, no, 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 no. When a man lives in this material world, he sees the changing of the seasons, he observes the fertility of the soil, he observes the animal life and the fruit that is provided for the happiness and the physical well-being of man, and he denies the existence of a creator? <laughs> Take a fool to do that. It would take somebody that's not even conscious of where he is or what's going on around him, uh, changing of the seasons. Uh, all of this has uh, bearing upon one's acceptance of God's divine revelation. By faith, we understand that the worlds have been framed by the Word of God. He spake and it stood fast. He commanded. It was done. Oh, and it hasn't been made out of things which appear, I say. Somebody says, now, uh, this exploded or that happened. No, 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 no. There was nothing material until God spoke it into existence. Well, somebody says, I don't believe that. That has nothing to do with the facts. No, no. That has to do with the destiny of your soul. The truth remains substantial and solid, and it is uh, an enduring fact. Yes, sir. Faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. By faith we understand that the worlds have been framed by the Word of God, so that what is seen hath not been made out of things which appear. Oh, and then he talks about the practicality of faith. Uh, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, uh, through which he had testimony born unto him that he was righteous. Well, j j just a moment. How do we know about this uh, business? Where do I hear of this fellow Abel and this man uh, Cain? Oh, Genesis chapter 4. 
You see, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that through patience and through comfort of the Scriptures we might have hope. Romans 15, verse 4. Now, Paul talks of a number of mistakes made by ancient Israel and the consequences of their era. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Oh, and then in verse 11 of chapter 10, he tells them, These things happen unto them by way of example. <clears throat> they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages are come. You need a knowledge of the Old Testament if you're to properly understand the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. So then faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Sixty-six books in God's Word, Old Testament and New Testament. The Old Testament, of course, fulfilled by Christ, removed, nailed to His cross, is no longer authoritative in matters religious. Oh, but it is the Word of God. And by example, it teaches many, many lessons. So in Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve, are grown up. And Cain is a tiller of the soil. He's an agriculturalist, a farmer. Abel is a keeper of the sheep, a shepherd, honorable occupations in both cases. Came to pass in the process of time that Cain brought of the first fruit of the ground an offering unto Jehovah. Now that sounds good. He recognizes his dependence upon God. He wants to show his love and appreciation. He desires to pay homage to him who is the source of life's blessings. It brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Jehovah. Under normal circumstances, that uh, sounds good, would be fine, you know. Oh, and it says that Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the uh, blood uh, thereof. He, he brought a lamb to sacrifice unto Jehovah. Oh, and the very next statement says, Unto Abel and to his gift God had respect, but unto Cain and to his gift God had not respect. Well, I, someone asked just a moment. Both of them are willing to sacrifice. Both of them are giving of their product uh, in an effort to pay homage, uh, to show their desire to worship God. Right. Well, why would he have respect for one and not for the other? Why would he have respect to Abel's gift and not to Cain's gift? Now, that's what our text has just told us. Verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abel offered. Now, as we've said a half dozen times already, faith cometh of hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, verse 17. God instructed these boys on how to worship. God told these boys what to offer. You see, the sacrifice made in the Old Testament period and even in the antediluvian period of human history had to be a bloody sacrifice. Why? because it typified the ultimate sacrifice that would be made to redeem your soul and mine. Jesus Christ shed His blood to redeem my soul. Without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews 9, verse 22. Impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin, as we've noted many times, Hebrews chapter 10 at verse 4. So we're talking about the blood of Christ. The Old Testament is a system of types, shadows, and prophecies of which Christ is the antitype, the substance, and the fulfillment. So God required a bloody sacrifice. Right. Abel did what God said. What does God call that? Faith. And you know what's interesting? That God calls nothing else uh, faith. There are many, many religious people today in the world, I mean positively religious. They make an effort to please God. Uh, they teach in the name of Christ. Well, the Lord said that, didn't He? That familiar passage, Matthew 7, verse 21, eh, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Well, wait, wait, wait just a minute. Let's apply that uh, to Genesis chapter 4. Cain brought an offering to God. Right. Cain is a tiller of the soil. Right. An honorable occupation. Oh, absolutely. No question about that. Oh, and the product of his efforts is essential to the maintenance of man's health. Oh, right. Right. Good for food. No question about that. Well, why did God not receive that? Why did He not respect the offering of Cain? Friend, the only thing God respects is His will. Now, faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Cain did something other than what God required. That won't work. That won't. Yeah, but he's sincere. Right, but it won't work. Yeah, but the, the vegetation that he brought is worth something. Oh, absolutely, but that won't work. 
You see, that has nothing to do with it. God respects only his own will. Abel did what God said. What does God call that? Faith. Oh, that's it? Well, let's go back to Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Oh, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now, that's called faith. Now, doing the will of the Father is not just being religious. No, no. Oh, it's not just teaching in the name of Christ. No, sir. Oh, it's not just helping the needy. No, no. It's not just making well those who are sick. Oh, no, no. No, no. Doing the will of the Father is doing what He said. Uh, and uh, what He said is written down here, and it says to you exactly what it says to me. And I need to appreciate that fact. Oh, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now listen to him. He said, Many will come unto me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy that his teach in your name? In your name cast out demons? In your name do many mighty works? Then will I profess unto them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Now sometimes people just have a hard time understanding that. These people taught in the name of Christ. From the day they became responsible people, they believed that Christ is the Son of God, right. They taught in His name, right. Sent missionaries to foreign lands, yes. Built hospitals and healed the sick, oh, absolutely. Yes, say. Oh, they did many wonderful works. They do it today. There's no question about that. But He said, uh, I'll say unto them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Why? Well, Cain's offering was worthwhile. The vegetables are delicious. Uh, the occupation is honorable. Uh, why didn't God, friend, God accepts only His own will. We do what God said, not what I think God would like if I did. Uh -uh, uh -uh. No, He's told you what He wants, and He's told you the only thing He will accept. And so I need to do what God has said. Uh, that's why Jesus said to these people on the day of judgment, though they had taught in His name, uh, they had done many mighty works uh, in His name. Uh, they would uh, healed the sick uh, in His name. Uh, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And He goes on to explain, He that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I liken him unto a wise man building his house upon the rock. Oh, the rains ascended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. Oh, but he that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, Maybe follows a manual or a discipline or the catechism or the confession of faith or the Book of Mormon or the Koran or whatever. Uh, no, no, uh, that's building on the sand. He that heareth these sayings of mine doeth them not. I like him unto a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. Rains ascended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall thereof. Uh, both of them religious, right. Uh, both heard the word of the Lord, right. But one decided to do it his way. Won't work. Oh, the other did what the Lord said. That's it. That's the only way you can stand justified before the Lord in the final analysis. Oh, but in our text, by faith Enoch the seventh from Adam, and you can read that in Genesis chapter 5, of course, was translated that he should not see death. Oh, and he was not found, for God translated him. Why? Oh, uh, before his translation, it was uh, witness was born to him that he walked pleasing to God. Now listen, and without faith it is impossible to be well-pleasing to Him. For he that cometh to God, M-U-S-T, must believe that He is, that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after Him. How was Enoch's faith made manifest? Walk pleasing to God. What pleases God? Doing what He said. In Genesis chapter 4, Cain and Abel. Well, we understand that. Without this faith you cannot please God. Well, somebody says, I'm sincere. That's fine, and that's good. Somebody says, I believe in Christ. That's essential. That's, that's great. Somebody says, I'm, I'm deeply religious. Oh, that's, uh, that's wonderful. That's great. Are you doing what the Lord said? Or are you following some religious teaching uh, that's counter to the will of God? Uh, do you belong to some human institution? Have you joined something that is religious? Friends, you can't please God that way. Somebody says, but I'm sincere. No, you are. I'm a good person. I know you are. Honest, sincere, morally upright. We love that. Appreciate that. Good neighbors, fine people. Friends, we're lost until we give our lives in faith to the Lord. Faith simply accomplishes God's will 
in our lives. We need to understand that. We need to give time to the study of God's Word, believing it with all of our hearts, believing that Christ is the Son of God, turning away from sin in repentance, ah, and upon a confession of that faith, being buried with Him in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. A very simple process, clothed in terminology that the highly intelligent will reject. He does, no, no, uh, by faith man pleases God. Just doing what the Lord said is the only way that I can stand justified in the final analysis. Hebrews chapter 11 shows that to be true in many, many ways. May God help us in the study and application of His Word. You are viewing Preaching the Gospel, a nationwide program brought to you by the Churches of Christ. They would love for you to come and visit their services. Why not come this next Lord's Day? Call us if you need assistance in locating a Church of Christ in your area. Maybe you'd like to have your own copy of today's lesson on audio cassette or CD. We offer these free of charge. Write down the number of today's program and contact us by calling 1-800-683-3120 or email us at ptgwjw at aol.com. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia, 30721. Often we get requests from those of you who want to learn more and study further about the Bible. We have available to you, free of charge, a new Bible study series. The first of this six-lesson series will be mailed to your house at your request. This Bible study is also offered free of charge. Preaching the Gospel is under the oversight of the elders at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. It is fully funded by members of the Churches of Christ. And now, back to James. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. How does that faith come? Faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, by my ideas about what the Word of God... No, 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 no. That's why it's important when we preach, we preach as the oracles of God, 1 Peter 4, 11. That's why we need to call Bible things by Bible names, or do Bible things in Bible ways. Uh, that's the only way we can please God. You see, Hebrews 11 makes it very, very clear that saving faith is in evidence when a man does simply what God said, or not what I think would please God. Uh, not the way I see this thing. I know what God said, but I'm going to do it this way. It seems to me to be, but that has nothing to do with it. You lose your soul. Faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We need to give our lives in humble obedience to the Lord's will. 